Hi everybody, Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars and on this week's episode it's going to be all about my favourite car, the VW Beetle and our bolt-in conversion kit. Now it's fair to say the Beetle is not exactly a rare car, there was over 25 million of them made and I've had my fair few of them over the years. In fact, my first ever car was a 1968 VW Beetle when I was 17. Cue lots of embarrassing photos that Tim's no doubt going to dig up now and put on the screen. Uh, and I've had that car, as I say, since I was six, 17, uh, and I still have it now. And I'm, well, 50 in a couple of weeks. So uh, who out there has still got their original car they passed their test in? Uh, at the age of 50. I bet there's not many. So I've had a 1968, I still have a 1968. Uh, I had a 1961, a 66. Um, I've got my 1303, obviously. So I've had a fair few Beetles and uh, I've done probably all there is to do to Beetles over the years, haven't I, Tim? I've uh, customised them. Have I've crashed one yet? I don't know if I've crashed one. There you go. Well, let's maybe leave that one. A wheel <laughs> fell off one. <laughs> But I wasn't driving, so it wasn't my fault. Um, so yeah, as far as Beetles are concerned, I, I've pretty much done all there is to do to Beetles. I've, um, I've restored them. Um, I've done, you know, Cal look, Resto Cal, those who know those sort of things. Um, uh, custom, uh, my 68 Beetle now, it's got a roof chop and I've depillared it as well. Um, we should do an episode on that. On your Beetle, the we original should do one. an episode on that. Mm. Yeah, you're right. Let's do an episode on the Beetle. Um, and as far as engines are concerned, um, you know, I've rebuilt I've so many engines, but the last iteration of engine I had, um, and I went Type 4 engine for those that are in the VW Beetle world will know. Uh, type 1 is an um, engine that's normally in a VW Beetle. Type 4 was in, um, well, the Type 4 car. Uh, which was a, a VW Beetle of the 70s, but also uh, VW buses. And it's a big, strong uh, motor. And I started going Type 4 motors, high performance, in my Beetles in the mid-90s, let's say. And my last iteration in my 68 Beetle, um, I'll have to find a picture of that because it's pretty awesome, was a supercharged um, Type 4 motor, 2.4 litres, um, with... Uh, a water-cooled uh, intercooler, um, custom-made, um, Cosworth injectors. Uh, it was a beast of a thing. And it was about as powerful as you can probably push a road-going Beetle. And I went down to south of France and Italy in that, and it was fantastic. Um, but it was 200, just over 200 horsepower, and uh, it was high maintenance to keep that thing alive. Oil changes, filter changes, etc., etc. And then... I did my first electric conversion, and I thought, wow, same amount of power, no maintenance, zero reli uh, uh, 100 reliability, and as you saw, yeah, this is the future. So uh, there we go, long story short of my you know, history of VW Beetles. Um, now this one here, in particular, um, is an oval, or um, uh, as they call it, um, an oval beetle. Uh, made it, uh, where are we now, dates are something like 1953 to 57, we'll have to check that, uh, for the Beetle, uh, uh, for the Oval Beetle. Before that, it was split, split window at the back, so essentially that had a, a split there. And after the Oval, they went to a larger rear window, and in the early 60s and um, about mid-60s, the uh, rear window got bigger, etc. So this is an Oval. And as far as the kit is concerned, there's a number of iterations for uh, VW Beetle kits because uh, over the years, uh, Beetles have changed. Bear in mind, they were in production from oh, late 40s through to uh, early 80s and in Brazil and Mexico beyond that as well. So they've had their fair amount of changes. So let's cover some of those changes that affect the, uh, the bolting kit that we've got in front of us. Now, we'll start off the back end, and I've come into uh, the Beatles' posher uh, cousin, this 911, because essentially the suspension is pretty much the same, really. Um, there's two different iterations at the rear of a Beetle. Swing axle and IRS. Now, IRS, which is what this is here, uh, is easier for us to work with, because essentially you've got independent rear suspension, which is what IRS stands for, um, and you've got a... Oh, a CV joint, which is that, 
on the end of a drive shaft and that goes onto the wheel end and on the inner end is a Tesla stub so we can just hook that into a Tesla and take the engine and gearbox completely out so with IRS conversions we use a Tesla drive unit but with swing axle we can't do that so with those conversions or those Beetles if you like we use a uh, net gain Hyper 9 motor and attach that to the transmission so two different flavors at the back is if you've got a swing axle it'll be a Hyper 9 onto the gearbox or transmission and if it's an IRS back end um, then it'll be a Tesla drive unit now, IRS was available on things like the 1303, the 1302, and semi-automatic um, uh, Beetles. So in the main, most of the conversions are Hyper 9. Now, back end of the Beetle, the keen-eyed VW Beetle enthusiast would have noticed these two things here, which normally aren't on an oval Beetle. So usually this is a swing axle rear end. And this has either been converted to IRS or it has a semi-auto floor pan on. So that makes our life a lot easier because now we can put a Tesla drive unit in. So let's have a chat about that. So this is the Tesla drive unit that's going to be going into this. So what is this? This is a small Tesla drive unit, a small rear Tesla drive unit. And it's sitting in our uh, latest iteration of the bolt-in cradle because don't forget all our kits are bolt-in. Um, and how does a bolting cradle work? Well, essentially, you are bolting it to the front trans transmission mount and the two frame horn mounts, which are down here. The frame horns are the big bits of metal that come out, out into the engine bay. And between the frame horns and the front transmission mount, that is all that carries the engine and transmission. And this weighs a lot less than a Beetle engine and transmission, that's for sure. So you've got four bolting points, so two up front and two down there. And the reason why I say this is the latest iteration is because you know, we've been converting Beetles for seven odd years now. And over that time, um, you know, evolution happens. And um, the latest iteration of this, once we get our new former, uh, which essentially allows us to uh, bend tighter um, uh, tube radiuses if you like um, we'll be able to make this piece all in one that goes around here um, which will make it a lot simpler and more elegant looking let's say so this is our go-to solution for uh, IRS conversions or IRS beetles um, the only difference is some of the front transmission mounts are uh, slightly different you've got two bolt three bolts and I think there's one other. Um, so there's slightly different um, bolt patterns uh, and mounts at the front. So even though you know you might think, oh, it's a Beetle bolting conversion kit, there's lots of different iterations um, which we've had to cover over the years. I think we've probably done about uh, at least 10 Beetles over the years. Um, so this is the go-to solution for IRS. And as I say, for a uh, swing axle, you would need to get a Hyper 9 with a, a conversion plate that bolts onto the existing transmission, which we do a lot of as well. So that's the drivetrain covered. Let's cover the batteries next. Now, I just thought of something before I go on to the batteries, actually, I need to cover the radiators because radiators is a foreign word uh, when talking about VW Beetles because a VW Beetle is air-cooled, so you don't need radiators. So we have to come up with a solution um, uh, and a position um, to mount radiators to do cooling for the battery and the motor. The reason why I say position is because there's no radiator previously on it, so you can't put it at the front. So what we do, essentially, this radiator pack gets mounted uh, onto the back of the motor cradle, like so. And you've got one here for the uh, battery pack and one here for the motor and inverter. So, yeah, a, a foreign object as well as the electric motor and batteries, a, a foreign object in the VW Beetle. A radiator. Right, time to talk about the battery packs. So, um, the battery packs are fairly standard, unlike the motors. You've got those two iterations of motors. You've got the Hyper 9, which is 120 horsepower, onto the original Beetle transmission, which, to be fair, that's about as much as you want to put into a Beetle transmission, even though they are quite strong. Uh, and then you've got the uh, Tesla motor, which is, what, a peak 300 horsepower um, uh, motor, obviously tuned down a lot, certainly in a car like this. Um, but if you wanted to turn it up, like I do in my 
Beetle, although I have a large Tesla driving it in my Beetle, you can go as high as 600 horsepower, which is insane. Uh, so the motors themselves, you've got the two iterations, but the battery packs themselves are the same, no matter if it's in an oval, a 60s Beetle, a 70s Beetle, 1303 S, they're all the same. Um, and what we've got here is 37 kilowatt hour battery pack. This is your rear pack. And this goes in the luggage space behind the back seat. And it's mounted very securely at the front here, at the rear, and also at the rear, um, uh, just where my hand is there, onto the rear firewall through some massive spreader plates as well. Um, so that's your rear pack. And as I say, that's the same no matter what beetle it's going in. And you're probably wondering, what's this thing on the top? Well, this is the header tank for the Beetle, uh, for the um, battery pack. So this has the coolant in because obviously you, you can't have your header tank uh, lower than what's being cooled. And the batteries uh, kind of come to around about there in here. Uh, so the header tank has to be at a higher point um, for the coolant to you know, flow down. Uh, so that's your header tank for the uh, battery pack, the rear battery pack and the front battery pack to be fair. You've got, you know, there you are. so there's your coolant in and out on this pack here. And then at the rear here we've got your, uh, your vent, uh, your high voltage um, connections and your service disconnect here. You've got uh, your low voltage uh, Molex plug here for 12 volt communications to the BMS inside here. And you've got an earthing point there. All battery packs uh, have to have an earthing point to the uh, vehicle uh, and that's what that is there. So that's the front, uh, rear and front battery packs. All the same, no matter what iteration. The only thing that changes is the mounts for the front battery box. And what I mean by that is the battery box stays the same, but there's a mounting plate that goes underneath because the petrol tank changes in Beetle. So let's have a chat about that. Now this is the bit that changes a lot over the years in the VW Beetle, the, the front boot or the frunk as the Americans like to call it, um, and in particular the petrol tank mounting. And the oval, there's a very small petrol tank that goes in here, and in later Beetle 60s, 70s, that is slightly bigger. In the 1303s, which has a first and strut front suspension, this area completely changes. But as I say, the front battery pack itself remains the same. And what we have is like a mounting plate, which is just behind me here, that goes uh, and does the conversion between whatever's here to the standard uh, battery box. So if I grab this one, this essentially, is our little conversion solution and that goes in place uh, there like so and then that got, gets bolted into the original petrol tank mounts and then the battery pack goes on top and then gets bolted in so that's how we've got over the fact that there's different iterations of uh, mountings if you like in the front of a beetle by having this kind of adapter plate to go and make up the, uh, the difference. Right, now inside the car, uh, we can see that the guys are very busy putting in the low voltage loom um, and the high voltage loom. Obviously, these were on pin boards um, because obviously this is a repeatable kit for us. Uh, the low voltage loom kind of follows the original loom of the car, which comes from that direction up there and goes through there. High voltage mainly stays within the center tunnel and um, comes in at the rear and exits at the front inspection hatch. And then um, there's the how do we control the uh, uh, motor and instrumentation. And we don't really want to spoil this uh, dashboard, although having said that, somebody has made a hash of this dashboard. Beautiful looking dashboard. And then somebody drilled a massive hole through there, which I'm really peed off about, um, to fit that because they couldn't fix a starter motor problem. So they put that button in there and drill the horrible blooming hole right there. So I'm going to undo that. We're going to weld that up and spray that back so that we get rid of that. But we don't want to spoil this um, uh, beautiful dash. So what we've done, we've got things like um, uh, the original ivory coloured switches for uh, heater controls and as far as instrumentation and direction is concerned, what we're doing, um, as with all of our Beetle kits, is we've got this little box here, which bolts onto the original uh, gear shifter mount down here. 
and if I just connect it up, that essentially sits like that. So here you've got your reverse, neutral and drive and a little display here which tells you all you need to know about your battery pack, uh, voltages, uh, battery temperatures, etc, etc. And that's it. So a nice bolt-in solution there. And then behind me, um, I'll just leave that there. Behind me we have uh, the rest of the bits and pieces. So let's have a look at that. Now under the back seat is uh, the bit where they're still working a little bit on putting the uh, low voltage loom in, but um, we have uh, where the old 12 volt battery used to be. Still 12 volt battery, but obviously a lot smaller because it doesn't have to crank and start a, uh, a cold beetle engine anymore. It just needs to have enough juice to close a, a contactor. Um, and it still runs obviously the windscreen wipers and the lights. So you've got a small little motorbike type battery down there. You've got your controller for the Tesla motor, you've got your uh, 12 volts um, big fuses, um, small blade fuses in here, relays and other bits and pieces, your um, MCU, so that's your master control unit that's communicating to things like the uh, motor controller and the battery management system. So essentially underneath the back seat is where the rest of the bits and pieces go and over there is the high voltage junction box which has got things like the DC to DC converter, charger and heater feeds uh, coming in and out. So there we go, underneath the back seat, nice and tidy and it beautifully mounts into the existing um, mounts that were already in place for things like the 12 volt battery which is uh, what I like about the engineering aspect of this, it's just literally just all bolts in as one unit, it's great. Now, back in the engine bay, just to finish uh, the kit off, we've got the 7 kilowatt charger above my head here. Um, we've got the header tank, uh, so we need two header tanks to forget, one for the battery pack and one for the motor and inverter. And you're probably thinking, why can't you just use one? Well, they work at different coolant levels, at uh, different temperature levels. So the, uh, the battery would not like the higher temperatures that the motor and inverter gets up to. So since we've got two separate systems, so this is the one for the motor and inverter. Um, here is the connector for the motor. So essentially there's the motor ends dangling down there and that goes on there like so, closes up and connects to the motor down here and over here we've got the charge socket. Now you may be wondering why have you got the charge socket inside the engine bay? Well on older Beetles uh, the petrol filler was actually underneath the boot itself so it directly went into the tank so there's no um, petrol filler if you like on the outside of the body of uh, early beetles so that's why you have to have a charge socket in the engine bay on later beetles um, probably uh, what mid to late 60s and onwards the uh, petrol filler cap was on the front uh, quarter panel um, so that's why the charge socket's in there um, and obviously all the high voltage goes in and then through the car on the um, uh, plate just behind my head here. So that's, that's enough inside the engine bay, I think. Or motor bay, I think we should call it now. So there we go. That is our electric conversion kit for the VW Beetle, or the various iterations of, because uh, hopefully I made it clear in this video, over the decades of production, there was a number of uh, evolutions, if you like, of the VW Beetle, but our standard kit fits all. Uh, apart from the motor, there's two choices there, obviously, with a swing axle and IRS. And while we're talking about motors, obviously, that's a lot more powerful than the uh, 36 horsepower, I think, uh, engine that used to be in this. Um, so we've disc brake conversion on the front, uh, additional braking from the motor with the regenerative braking at the rear but don't forget we tune these motors down so even though that's maximum 300 horsepower it's tuned way down to um, cope or so that the uh, car can cope because you know who would put 300 horsepower in a beat leg? You'd have to be an idiot. You would have to be an idiot. Oh no it's an idiot who put 600 horsepower in a beat. Or 600 horsepower in a beat exactly you've got to be insane to do such things. Um, so that is the conversion kit itself. I think we've covered most of the things. Is there anything I've missed? What do we normally get asked? Uh, weight. Weight, yes. Yeah, there's, there's a long waiting list, unfortunately. Is that what you mean? Oh, very good, very good. <laughs> now, as far as weight is concerned, this weighs more, but um, it's effectively the, the same as a full tank of fuel, uh, engine and gearbox, plus one passenger. 
So you're not carrying too much more weight around, just imagine you're carrying a friend around all the time. But the most important thing is, weight distribution wise it's better, because you've got a bit more weight up front of the front battery pack. And back in the day, I always used to try to drive around with a full tank of fuel in the front, or you know, even put in something like a sandbag, which people used to do to improve the weight distribution and handling at the front. And I'm old enough to remember that when I lived down in North London, I used to travel all the way up to Wales back home with a full tank of fuel, which cost me 18 pounds, which is insane. You can't do that now, can you? I can remember struggling to put 10 pounds worth into a car. You can probably remember when it was two shillings, <laughs> mate. So the weight's slightly increased, but you've got a huge increase in power to weight ratio, haven't you? Yeah. So you've gone up from 36 horsepower to 120. 120 with a Hyper 9 yeah. and up to probably around about, let's say, 200 horsepower, 250 horsepower with a uh, small drive unit. At the rear. Can we have rapid charging in this? You can have rapid charging. This one ha doesn't have it, but yep. Uh, other conversions that we do have rapid charging uh, options as well. Cool. Anything else we forgot? I think that's it. Did Range, I think we covered we did, us uh, we about 150 miles. On. So I think that's all. Any other questions, ask us below. Obviously, we supply these uh, conversion kits to conversion companies around the world. We're still not doing DIY uh, supply yet. Um, but uh, I think that's it. So, you know, there we go. Conversion kit for the VW Beetle, a car which I have huge emotional attachment to. Um, I've had them all my life. I love them to bits. But I'm interested to know questions to you guys do you have a car that has a special you know place in your heart or what car did you did you have in your youth what was your first car because my first car uh, was a vw beetle so answers below oh we always uh, look at the comments below really interested to uh, read them so on that note i hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you on the next one